I think the experience that people have, that's really the, that's the brand it's, itself. So we think about that in terms of service design and user flows across the, the whole uh, journey. So we, we're really thinking about it holistically. And when I uh, define brand, it's not just the, the look and the feel, although that's a big part of it, but it's also what are those features or those uh, experiences that really can speak to, uh, to the brand. And I think another important point to make is you know, a lot of companies really want to differentiate from each other. Well, differentiate how? Well, differentiate in a way that is, is you and speaks to your company values and speaks to your brand values. Having a, a design process that can tease that out and really clearly articulate it, I think is a great place for uh, a design to be thinking. Phil and I were thinking about this as um, what, are the, what are the needs of design? And I was kind of thinking, Bill, you know, when you and I walk in a room, we might as well just draw a pyramid on the board, right? <laughs> like we sort of think in this way. We're, and we're going to do a workshop later where we're, we're talking about sort of hierarchies as well. And, and we'll have a pyramid for that. And we will, yeah, exactly. Uh, but this one is about design needs, right? So what are, what are the needs of designs to deliver on what Bill was just talking about, about uh, product designs that really embody brands and that are the brand, the experience is the brand. What we find is at the base level, what, they, what design needs to be is effective. And what effective means is that it's simple, uh, it's learnable, easy to use, that it, that it performs well, right? So at the base of really what we all do in UX is things have to be able to complete tasks. We have to be able to uh, create designs that are effective for our users, that they can, they, they can do what they set out to do, that it, that it achieves that goal. But on the next level um, is, is an emotional layer, right? If we can connect with, with certain moments in that design on an emotional level, we can create a little, a little more of a bridge to a better experience. Uh, so this is creating things that are beautiful, highly crafted, um, innovative and alive, and, I, and this is also the, the, the layer that uh, Patty Palmer was talking about yesterday in her talk, if anyone went to that. And, I'm, and we're not gonna get into that, but I'm, I'm gonna reference kind of what she did because I loved what, what she laid out about sort of how um, to achieve some of this on that emotional layer. But we really think that's really important is to be able to start to connect with users on an emotional level. How are they feeling inside of the experience and how, do, how does the design respond to that? And we'll, we'll show some examples of how we, of how we uh, illustrate that. But, but her, she really got into sort of the, you know, some of the design how. But we think there's a, there's a layer right on top of that too, which is really the essence of what Bill was getting to, which is that ex expressive layer. So connecting this to the company itself. If the, if the experience, the product is the brand, how does that express that brand. And this is thinking through you know, how different products uh, work together. In the case of Metro, unifying many products inside of Microsoft, right, that all speak the same language. And as Bill said, they even simplified the logo based on uh, what they were doing in the, in the software experiences themselves. Uh, so it really embodies that brand, right? And I, I love what Bill was talking about also about being authentic. That's the differentiator. Well, who are we as a company? And, and does the experiences that we're creating, do they really ladder up to those greater principles? Are they helping convey what those principles are? You may have seen this. Um, it, it came out this last year. Uh, it was something that Envision did about the maturity of uh, design organizations. And they, they looked, they, they sent a survey out to over 2,200 different, different companies. So these are enterprises, agencies like Blink, et cetera. And they're looking at how mature organizations were about how they were implementing design inside of the organizations. And they came up with five different levels of, uh, of design or, or um, different, five different levels of organizations and the maturity, how mature they were 
with their design practices. And so the first level, it's a huge chunk, 40%, 41% of, of the respondents were doing things like wireframing, uh, prototyping, uh, and really screen level design, what they consider sort of screen level design. So they had designers inside of the organization. They've got design, some design process, right? and they're getting design done and getting design delivered, but really thinking about it more at a, at a feature level. So that's a pretty big check, 41%. The next level, I just sort of taking that up a notch, we're starting to do workshops, we're talking to stakeholders, so we're starting to integrate into the, into the organizations um, <clears throat> and do some usability testing as well at this level. Uh, the third level is more integration with, um, with, our, with our development team, sort of the end-to-end -end process, right? So more design ops, design systems are getting in there for the level three companies. So <clears throat> they're getting more mature. Level four is actually starting to measure design. So measure you know, how, how design is performing and pulling that back into the, into the process. There's a really small percentage of what they call the visionary companies. Only 5% of 2,200 organizations. And this was done this last year, right? So this isn't 10 years ago. 5% were what they called visionary companies that were doing three things differently. One uh, is they were doing studies on uh, uh, product market fit. I'm sure Dan Olson would love to hear that because that's something he talks about. Right? They are uh, creating design vision, and we're, we're gonna show some of that, how we do that. Um, and they're also you know, creating strategies for how this works cross-platform across the company. And they also have a, design is infused in how the company thinks. Those level fives outperformed the level ones. They, they, they drove four times more revenue had five times the cost savings, six times better to market, time to market was six times better, and their valuations went up 26 times. Right, this is crazy, right? Like, why aren't we all doing that, right? Why aren't we all in the 5%, right? Going back to what's the ROI, you know, don't have enough time, don't have enough money. But you can see, you know, companies that are investing in this and they have these mature processes are performing better, right? So I think as designers, we need to start talking about this, right? And starting to, you know, move organizations in this way. Let's say there are just one or two designers on your team and um, you've got a lot of product to ship and you're kind of behind the ball and scrambling to get solutions to developers because you don't want developers to be idle. Uh, um, that's a common pressure that so many groups face. And I've faced it for, for years. And organizationally, you, you gotta, um, as a design discipline, get in a little bit more uh, ahead of the game, which I'm sure all of you know, how do you get in front of the ball, uh, start in the processes earlier, um, so you're not spending all of your time just um, getting those, that fit and finish uh, detailed. Um, and the answer to that's different for each organization. They're um, knowing the culture and how you build design teams, how you get that uh, ability to get out in front. Um, with, with Microsoft, I found culturally that group loved it was really motivated by competition. So if you showed them other examples of companies that are doing this and, and the products and the impact, and like, oh, we're gonna do that too. And so there's a lot of different types of techniques uh, that you can start to build your design team and get out in front. Um, well, in the expressive level, we, we um, of course, uh, think a lot about science and art and the science, it's the, the evidence, the, the user insights that we get uh, through uh, <clears throat> surveys and tests and smart questions. And, but it's not just that, that's just part of the consideration uh, matrix. But you know, what are trends out there in the marketplace? What are other um, 
new technologies, really being clear on what the business goals are. Um, there's some unique opportunities for a given company. How, how can they differentiate based on uh, what they have? Like Amazon really differentiates because they have so much data on everyone and that shapes how they think about products. Uh, so I, I'm, I, I'd say it's more than just customer insights. It's a, a combination of these things which we need to consider. If you can, as a design team, start to integrate some of this, or not just design team, could be the whole product team needs to be thinking about those things. Um, and then um, we also realize that people aren't just automatons, they really respond. We know how powerful emotions are. There's a way to factor those in, in the design process as well. It's the, the merging of these things, of all this evidence and science with the, that softer sense of uh, beauty, empathy, inspiration. Um, I, I think when you can consider both of these things together, you're in a better position to do uh, more groundbreaking uh, design solution. So here's a traditional process. Um, let's gather some insights, however much we can, get really clear on who our audience is and um, understand how they kind of work through the service or the system. Um, let's build, let's understand, you know, the content strategy and build a uh, information architecture, we start to build wireframes, and um, then we put a visual design layer on top of it, and then start to, start to ship it. Um, we're probably all really familiar with this, um, but I think that tends to regulate uh, visual design and the impact visual design can have uh, to maybe mere window dressing at the end, and, and uh, I, I think you can be much more effective if we start thinking about that as its own process. So these next two processes that I'll show are, are there to, to bring brand to life. On the personality, uh, brand personality level, we uh, really like to clearly understand those, those brand personality keywords. Like with Bang & Olsen, it was iconic and audacious and high craftsmanship, things like that. Um, that serves uh, as a way to help us get at mood boards. Uh, uh, and um, uh, we're doing this right along at the same time that we're uh, looking at insights and personas. We're not waiting for that whole process. Uh, we're getting up front um, because there are strategic aspects in a process to that as well. And the fact that we're doing this at the same time really informs uh, each other. Um, uh, coming up with concepts helps us think about better questions to ask uh, in research. So um, uh, getting the ability to be able to do uh, not just the waterfall method, but um, concurrently. Uh, also motion, <clears throat> I think is one of my favorite aspects to bring emotion into product design, uh, and I'll show you some examples of how we, we integrate that. So this is a process in and of itself to arrive at a personality uh, that we wanna infuse in, in the system. Revelation for Bill and I was sort of doing those activities concurrently, help inform each other, right? Those different layers. And because before that, I had always thought, well, I really need like, you know, uh, Dan put it up you know, the other day, the double diamond, right? We really have to discover and define. And, you know, my thought was always, you know, clear sort of design intent before we can start exploring solutions. And so, you know, in the problem space to the solution space, all of that, I, I think all of that still exists and there's nothing wrong in representing it that way. But what we're finding is some of these activities that designers do help inform you know, that, that we're doing in that, um, what, what he called sort of the, uh, the solution space can inform the problem space a little bit too, which is, which is the new sort of twist that we're, we're putting on that. And, and we are running some of those processes concurrently. Um, you know, traditionally at, at, at Blink, I might 
have thought, you know, we're, we're going to bring in visual design, especially like a visual designer later in the process. And now we we right at the beginning of the, we've got, you know, visual design and interaction designs paired um, on projects. Taking those different personas, we started to map them to the experiences that they were having, searching for content um, on the NASA site, or in this case, on the on the uh, left side is actually them starting at Google and finding the NASA content and then landing on that site. And what we're looking for here is we're doing two things. One is seeing how people with different uh, goals for our content are coming into the experience and where they overlap. So we're trying to map, hey, both you know the parent and the teacher land in this experience in kind of the same way or or not. But then the second thing from sort of the emotional side is thinking about you know, positive reactions to the experiences that they're having are things that are easy and friction free and make a lot of sense. The things that are kind of like, yeah, I'm just, I'm going through this gate. I kind of get it to at the bottom, the little sad face, you know, things that are, are kind of are broken. They're either ending the experience for me where I don't know where to go next or I'm bailing out um, into something or it's creating some negative emotion. Um, to me. And generally as UX designers, we look at that, you know, in bottom row, especially as places, you know, opportunities for improvement. Right? But we can look at look at all of this and sort of understand some of the pathways. And it starts to help us understand, you know, someone's kind of emotional journey. And it's the beginnings of figuring out what are we going to do about making sure we start creating better experiences for when they um, hit some of these bottoms, you know, hit some of the the, the negative experiences here. What can we do to help them through that? What are, what are the friction? What are the pain points to it? And, and encourage teams to think about interaction, motion, and visual design together as a holistic gesture, if you will, because they really inform each other. If you really just think about interaction design and then hand it over to a visual designer to make, to make it look nice, you're really missing a lot of opportunities. It's how we think about this together. Because if I know I have motion, I can change the visual design a little bit. Um, uh, it doesn't have to work as hard, for example. Generally inside of organizations, we, we aim you know, just above sort of effective, right? Like we're trying to just get the basics done. We need effective uh, you know, UX. Uh, and but, but we hear a lot of organizations just talking about it like that, right? Like our product experience, you know, just needs to deliver. Um, you know, they, they talk about it as great UX, but the, really the aim isn't much much higher than than the effective bar, right? And it's all we can sort of take on or or deliver as design and, and product teams. And so we think we should aim up higher on that on that pyramid. Um, and we know, right, that a beautifully designed product is perceived to be more valuable. Uh, to companies, you know, we, we talk about those, those visionary companies have really in-depth processes that are doing visionary exercises like the NASA work to really show the organization where, where this can go. Uh, they're doing studies on product market fit are, you know, like we talked about driving more revenue, quicker to market, right? More valuation, right? Um, but also it's that connection with our users and sort of what they're getting out of it that also increases. Um, and so the other piece to this, you know, that, you know, is that, you know, emotional connections that are made, it's not only helping our users, but it's also inspiring our teams, right? And, and so that gets really important too as a profession that we're starting to deliver experiences that are delivering for organizations real expression of, of the brand. You know, what, I think Bill's example of, you know, kind of the impact he had at Microsoft is a great example of that, right? Coming up with a way um, to unify the product suite through through design made a huge impact on that on that organization. Oh, I guess that's the end of the so another one of our transitions that right. so good at. We used to have a, a, a slide that said thank you. Right, and I think we took it off. Anyway, right, thank you guys. Yeah. For, for <laughs>